past eight. So we're used to seeing him performing on stage, but now Alfie Bow is shedding light on a cause very close to his own heart. He was just 23 when his father, Alf, died from a brain tumour and now, nearly three decades on, he says not enough is being done to fund new treatments. Well, Alfie joins us alongside Hugh Adams from Brain Tumour Research. Uh, really interesting, this, Alfie. Do you want to start by your recollections of your dad, if you don't mind, and the time he was poorly? Yeah, um, my, my dad was uh, full of life. He was this big-hearted, kind soul and... Then he got struck down with, with the brain tumour um, and it was a shock. It was the, the you know, we didn't know how it, it came about, what caused it and the decline to see my father go down hill over the 10 months that we had left with him was, was so sad. It was just so depressing and, and there's lots of people out there that go through the similar things that I went through. And what year was that? This was 1997. Yeah, when he so died. one would imagine in that time things have moved forward significantly, but the sense is that it hasn't. Well, certainly not. We're talking about a, a cancer here that's the biggest cancer killer of children and adults under the age of 40. And if we're going to improve that stark fact, it's very clear we need to invest in scientific research. We need to invest in the search for the scientists on the bench to get it through to the patients on the bedside. And if we've just been investing 1% of the national cancer spend on brain tumours, which has been the case... That's not going to move the, the dial along. And so that brain tumour research is very clear. We're campaigning to, to, to work with government, to get government money into this, to, to, to backfill some of the, the money that charities are already putting into research. It's, 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 it's a team effort, but it's got to be done or else we won't move things on. Uh, Hugh, you'll know this territory, of course, very well. There is a finite amount of money, mm -hmm. you know, in, at all in the system, and, and governments look very carefully at where they put their money. Uh, you know... You're obviously right to say more money is needed for research. No one's going to deny that. But very difficult decisions do have to be made about, you know, how to prioritise things. Yeah, I mean, I prioritise is exactly the, the key word here, Charlie. We want brain tumours categorised as a, as a clinical priority. We want innovative thought. And what we actually are asking for here is just parity of funding. So if we see what we've done with breast cancer, see what we've done with leukaemia, we can achieve the same with, breast can with brain cancer only if we fund to the same levels. So it's parity we're funding, not something different. And why do, you think, why do you think that has happened over time, that it's had less attention and ultimately less money? Yeah, I think there's a momentum thing here. I think if you're actually looking for money to fund your research, uh, you get the money, you get some progress, you put in for some more money, you say, this is where we're going, this is what we've achieved, this is what we can achieve with more money, and a sort of a snowball thing happens. Mm -hmm. That hasn't been happening with, with, with brain cancer, and that's what we've got to, we've got to challenge. And I think there's also the, the, the thing about um, the long-term advocate. So that's why it's so important that someone like Alfie, or Alfie gets involved with us mm -hmm. and tells a story of Alfie and says, this is what happened, I've learned that this hasn't moved on in the time since my father passed and I'm going to do something about it. And so it's a tremendous day for us at Brain Tumor Research to have Alfie with us. Talk us through what your family went through because it is a particularly cruel and aggressive form of cancer or can be. On the yeah, brain. I mean, I, I was at music college at the time and I was, I was coming home every single weekend to, to visit my dad. And um, every single week there was a change. There was a right. dramatic it was change. That quick. It was so quick. It really affected him in a, in a major way. Um, his emotions, his, his uh, stages of, uh, of the process of, of declining. It was, it was rapid. It was really rapid. I imagine, uh, do you want to tell us about this picture we're showing now? This was pretty soon after um, he came out of hospital and um, I was home from college again one weekend and uh, I was heartbroken. I was absolutely heartbroken because he was, he was everything to me. I, I, I had, I've had more time without him now than, I've, than I had with him. And the years that I had with him, I was a teenager, so you know, it wasn't, it was, but there's things like that I've missed out on where he hasn't seen my career grow, which is one thing, but the most important thing for me is he hasn't seen my children. Mm. And I never saw him hold my kids or mm. bounce them on his knee or anything like that. And he loved children, he loved his, nephew, his uh, grandkids. And uh, so it's things like that that, that that this illness really affects as well. You know, it's, and because of the symptoms of a brain tumour, it can so often be conflated with other illnesses, even when people yeah. go to the GP. Just talk us through that. Well, that was a, sh that was a surprise. He, he went to the GP and the GP turned around to him and just said, oh, Alf, you've got the flu. Mm. And that was it, and dismissed it and gave him some antibiotics and painkillers and that was it. And, and then he was complaining of these chronic headaches and he went for an eye test. And the optician looked in his eye and said, I think you've had a 
stroke. I'd like you to go to the hospital and have a, a brain scan. So he went, and that was when they found the tumour. I suppose, Hugh, that, that as you said before, Alfie telling you know, a very personal story and recollecting what happened then is really important. Above and beyond the idea of you know, the, the research that goes into it, just not more knowledge, that more people are aware of, of how, maybe how hard it is to spot, Mm. Well, how easily it can happen and, and people don't know. Well, 100%. I mean, people can only support a cause if they know it exists. And yet one in three people have been, uh, know someone who's been affected by a brain tumour. Now, more of those one in three people will know about brain tumour research because of Alfie Bow. I mean, the thing about symptoms is it's, it as befits a complex disease, the symptom lists are complex. There are three types, really. Headaches, um, seizures and focal symptoms. Now, the headaches quite often are, are late presenting. But I would say that 75% of people get headaches and 75% yeah. of people don't get mm. brain tumours. Fitting uh, um, is, is sometimes the first sign that something's wrong. But then you have these focal symptoms, and that's about where the tumour is in the brain. And so they're very, very varied. They may affect sight, they may affect hearing, they may affect smell. So uniquely complex. And if you've got something that's uniquely complex and uniquely difficult, you need to invest in research to understand it, because otherwise you won't get closer to curing it. And cancer is just not as simple as one illness, is it? It can take all different forms, particularly within the brain. And you want to raise awareness, especially on tour as well. Yeah, what do. are you asking audiences well, to do when they come? Well, I'm on tour. We're going, going to be having um, collections, uh, bucket collections. And, and then in the programme, there's uh, a, a flyer that goes in there where people can download an app and scan things to, to donate as much as they possibly can. And the thing is about this is that this illness, if I'm right in saying it, it affects young and old people. You know, it's not just an, an, an old person's illness. It can affect everybody. So my audience is a wide span of, of people, a wide span of age ranges. So I want to try and just make people aware of that. Uh, Alfie, I'm, I don't know how to ask this really, but I dare say over the years, there must have been times when you have been singing and your dad must have been looming very large. Yeah. Because you, you sing some very emotional songs <laughs> yeah. that people do. Yeah. It does take them to places. And yeah. I can only imagine. I didn't know this part of your story. No. It's part of the point you're making, isn't it? I can only imagine there must be times when this, this is very big in your head as you're singing. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I um, have a song in my set that I wrote with a friend and it's literally called Father. And it's all about him and about what he did for me as a, as a dad. And um, it does break my heart when I sing it. And then I go straight into singing Bring Him Home from Les Miserables. Oh, wow. And it's, it's quite a strong moment in the show. Um, yeah, I miss him. Every time I go on stage, I always ask him to say, you know, Dad, give us a hand before I walk out on stage. That's my only ritual when I go out on stage. And he can guarantee he always does. And Could you your dad like... sing? He was a great singer. Oh. He loved to sing, yes. He always sang around the house. Funny little songs, opera songs. He was great. He was always entertaining. Yeah. And I read that when he was diagnosed and as he, as he declined, he kept apologising to you, yeah. which says something about a person. They're not worrying about themselves, they're worrying yeah. about the impact on their family. Yeah, his, his, that was, that was hard-hitting, that, when he literally held my hand. And, and I was holding him when he passed away as well. He was unconscious and can't, couldn't communicate, but being there at the time to see him leave and to feel him leave, it was, it was, it was incredible. But no, he did apologise for... The situation he was in which yeah it was what just what he was like uh alfie we very much appreciate you sharing the story i, I can I, as always it's never easy as i know a lot no. of time has passed but we yeah. saw those pictures of you with your dad i know yeah. it's never never easy it was his anniversary last weekend right. so it always hits home yeah thank sounds you. like he's with you on stage when you he is thank those, you so much so uh, and you thank you because it will draw people's attention to the issue so thank you very much thank you thank you, thank you. Um, Alfie goes on tour this month where he'll be raising money for the brain tumour research. He begins in Ipswich on the 30th of May. I think it's the first time we've had Alfie on the set uh, and I said, can you sing now? <laughs> not going to. I'm not going to. It's never you're, too late. You're in the clear this.